getting ready to pull these frets. I uh, got all the tape off the board, you can see. And I am now remembering how deep the grooves are. So I've got a paintbrush here and it's kind of wet. So I'm, you know, moistening the wood around the fret to hopefully soften it up so I can get it out a little easier. And then we'll try pulling it. Now some of these have already started coming up so I'm not sure how difficult it's going to be to actually get them out. It's fairly clean. Looking pretty good. <laughs> So you saw me pull all the frets out of this. Right after I did that, I got a razor blade, a brand new one, and kind of scraped it, cleaned it up a little bit. Um, there's still a little bit more to do, but I think I'm gonna finish doing, you know, getting the fingernail marks out once the frets are in. I also got the uh, neck support. I've bent some fret wire. I think I have everything here to start fretting this. So I guess here we go. Crying today. I thought when my heart stopped, the world would stop too. But now I know life won't stop for you. This crazy. time I had the camera on the card filled up while I was fretting here towards the end. I got the rest of the frets put in you can see and I've also got a nut made for this and it's always worth mentioning we always need antler you know it's always something we run through so much of so if you ever have any kind of antler laying around you could just uh, send us an email and tell us you want to send it to us and I'm sure Melissa can sort you out on sending it to us Anyways, I've got this made and then this morning while Jerry was doing his shop talk, I got the tuners on. So, we're getting ready to be able to put a couple of strings on here to get this bridge placed. Uh, the last thing I need to do before that is glue this nut in and then put some grooves in it. I'm going to try to match the grooves of the old nut. That way it should play the same way the old one played. You know, it should feel the same. And I'm talking about string spacing. So I'll probably do the best I can with that. As for gluing this nut in, I'll probably use some of the super fatic glue. We've been having good luck with that and gluing nuts in. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this in. It's going to take a second or two for it to tack up. So I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do the next step. Jerry just made this new tailpiece that attaches. It attaches with a screw. You know, I'm using the same screw that I used to hang it with, so it fits right in that hole. It's kind of adjustable up and down, so I can get it right where I want it. I've gone ahead and actually put some leather in here just to protect the top. I really don't want to go scratching up the top any more than I have to. 
So this will be the way we set our intonation now. We'll put our strings in our two little slots here. I don't know how well you can see them, but there are slots in there. I've got the nut slotted and brought it down a little bit more. I've got a saddle sitting on here. I'm not 100% sure this is the saddle I'm gonna you know, live with, but for now, it'll do, and this bridge is sitting roughly, you know, where the old one was. If you remember, this uh, guitar came in without a bridge. Hard telling where the old bridge went. I've just got the regular uh, light gauge acoustic strings for this. I figure that'll be fine, you know. It might be fine with actually heavier strings, but, you know, guitar this vintage probably should just put the regular lights on it. I got my bassy string and it just kind of slides in here I think well, it kind of just slides in there there we go this will be the first time we've used this actually a little wide I think maybe not it's, it's running in a fair spot it just seems a little wide on the bridge but I guess I guess it's not I might need a wider saddle though. Let's get the high A string on there and then we'll know. we we'll have a better idea at least. I'm going to try to keep my other strings back in the package so I don't lose them or get them mixed up with something else. That works real good with the high E string. It's, you know, thinner than that low. I know you can't see me tying these on here, but it's okay, I'm just tying them on there the same way you always see Jerry tie them on. Uh, this is the second time I've done this this week, I think. So I've mostly got all the stuff here to do it. You know, I've got like the tuner sitting out, keeping uh, refreshed on how to do it, I guess is how you might say it. The action on the uh, nut side is still a little high. And this is actually the uh, high E strings out there a little far. All right, well, maybe I'll bring you over and show you a little bit more. It's not looking too bad. And that being said, it's not looking too great either. It's a little high, you know, 12, I'm not sure. And it's not up to tension, so you can't really tell. I'm not 100% sure in all of this. I may want to get a washer and put it on the uh, screw side on this new tailpiece. I just, I don't know. Might be a little safer. I think there's a couple of fine adjustments need to be made before I go tuning this all the way up to pitch. Like, I want to get the uh, action down at the nut side lower because you don't want to be having to bend these strings too much to get them at the pitch. Because if you bend them too much, you'll bend them sharp and then you're not actually getting your true intonation. So, I'm going to go ahead and make some fine adjustments and then probably bring you back before I get this truly intonated. So I'm getting this up to tune. Well, I'm getting it up to pitch. And I'm almost there. My high E's up to E flat. So is the low one.
now they're uh, being sympathetic because they're so close. So I'm getting a tone that's not what I want. Just barely flat of E. Well, there's a better way for me to mute this. That might work a little better. I'm not exactly right on E. I am a little flat, but when I note it at the 12, it should be the same amount flat. And it's a little flatter, which means it's too far back, which means it needs to come forward. But I'm already so far forward on the bridge, I'm just going to bring the bridge forward. And I'm not 100% sure that the bridge is square. But, you know, that'll be one more thing I check before we commit to it. Oops, I'm going to turn the tuner the right way. Okay, we're like... Just barely flat, barely flat at E now. That's looking really good. Well, I think it is. hair sharp actually. I think those are looking really good. I am gonna want Jerry to take a look at this before I, you know, commit to anything. But I'm really liking where it's sitting. It's looking good on the instrument, you know sitting right about where you think it should be and covers up the old scar you know where the uh, bridge before this one was on so if that is where it ends up that would be a good spot for it now just to have Jerry take a look at it so I had Jerry take a look at my bridge and my intonation here and I think we're pretty happy with where it's sitting uh, the one thing I did have to do was adjust the left to right on it and it's now sitting right where it should be so, I've gone ahead and I've taken my very sharp X-Acto knife and I'm starting to score around the bridge. I'm keeping it slightly turned in towards the bridge, that way it's not going to wander out. And I'm not putting too much pressure down either because I'd make it very likely to do something I don't want it to do, zip out and put a big scratch in my finish. So I'm being very careful, very deliberate. So I'm pretty sure I've got these deep enough. I am putting a little bit more pressure on it now and I think I'm doing pretty good. Not a whole lot of pressure, just a little bit. Um, I did already mark the saddle location on the bridge with a very fine point pencil. 
I think we're going to take these strings off. There we go. Very clear line. Cool, cool. I don't know if I had shown you this, but this bridge has already been scratched up on the back. So I probably, if I remember right, we were about to glue this on before we decided to refinish this. It's been a while since, uh, you know, between getting this finished and, you know, actually doing some real work on it. And I say finished, meaning putting finish on it. No, that's looking good. Uh, I think I'm going to go get Jerry's scraping tool, the one he uses to chip the finish off. Um, there, I might want to go back through here and deepen these lines a little bit, but, I mean, this is, this is pretty good. I don't know what I could have done any better here. So I'm going to get Jerry's tool and start working on getting some of this finish off. So I've got Jerry's tool. Here you can see it's a big piece of aluminum. He's put a little blade in. I'm pretty sure he made this. It's working well. I'm just, I'm going really slow because I don't want to mess up the finish. This is one of those things where, you know, I could very, very easily mess up a place I don't want to. On the other hand, I could very easily mess this up, but I can also very easily not mess it up if I just go careful. I don't remember, but I think this might be the first the first one I've had to remove all the finish on. So I'm getting a little bit more uh, adventurous with this in the more open areas where I'm a little further away from the ends or the edges. You know, I can go a little bit faster because I'm less likely to run off into something that I don't want to take the finish off of. But I'm probably not going to film much more of this because for me to do this and be careful, it's going to take a little while. And yeah, you, know, you probably don't have the best angle of seeing it anyway. If you really wanted to see it done really well, I'm sure there's a video from Jerry you'd much enjoy. As a matter of fact, I think you could probably go watch his last guitar build. That would be a really good example of him doing this. Alright, so I got the bulk of it off with this scraping tool. And then I used the uh, round edged X-Acto. And I kind of scraped up the corners and then I did just a little bit of sanding. Anyway, this drops in now. I mean, it actually has like a little step down. Assuming I get it. And then it fits in there. You know, I can obviously jump the edge, but <laughs> it does uh, actually, you know, drop down in there. So I think I think we're ready to glue this on. There's nothing I can think of that would prevent me from gluing this on. So maybe I'll get set up to do that. They say Truth, he'd be crying clamped up for at least four hours. I'm contemplating taking it off so I can keep moving with this. And since then I've not done a whole lot to this instrument. I did start to do a really light leveling on the frets because they're brand new. That has been all I've done so far really. So I'm fairly certain before I glued this on I said I saw no reason why I couldn't glue this on. And then Jerry came up with a good reason. You might have seen in the clip where I was putting the glue on, this now has 
the holes for the strings. And you know that was done to get all the spacing right and make sure it was straight and the strings were going to be straight. And when we did that we realized that you know the neck isn't straight or something. Because I had it centered between here and here. You know, and we marked it out, and I scraped the finish off, but then when we were looking at it, you know, like running the straight edge down the neck, it was not centered, so it had to go that way. Not a whole lot, but enough that I had to put a little bit of finish on here. And I'm still adding some finish right here. You might be able to see it. It's not a really big deal, because I've just been putting, you know, brushing on some lacquer, and I think with a little bit of sanding, you're never going to know that it was ever there. So not a huge deal, but now we know that it is going to be centered. It's going to look right with the strings running. They're not going to be like off to one side or anything silly like that. I guess the next thing I need to do is probably put the strings back on it and make sure that it is my my saddle location is still correct. I can see my pencil lines where I, the saddle was. But I should probably string it back up just to make sure it is still correct. Once we're sure of that, I can route the saddle slot when we get a saddle in it. So I've gone ahead and I've checked the intonation with the bridge where it's at and setting the saddle right where our pencil mark was got us pretty good. I mean, you know, basically perfect. Couldn't ask for any better. So I've started getting this set up to route that saddle slot. I looked at some pictures of guitars, same model of a similar year, to find out whether the saddle slot goes all the way across the bridge or just on the flat top and it goes all the way across so it goes into the kind of scalloped bits at the ends. So basically the depth of my saddle decides the length of my saddle because Wherever I stop on depth is where I'll stop on the scalloped part. I think I've got it set right where I want it. I guess that means I'm all set up to cut. So I know you they say when it um, Jerry came over and he kind of helped me um, spot whether it was you know deep enough or wide enough. Jerry made it a little bit wider than it was, so it's, you know, looking pretty good. I think it's looking really good, actually. Uh, you can see the finish is still not quite done. But for the bridge, I'm really kind of impressed with this. It's looking pretty good. It's about half the depth of the bridge, the slot, that is. You know, the bridge is almost 300 thousandths, and the slot is about 155 thousandths, roughly. It's close to 85 thousandths in width. Typically Jerry cuts them at 100. I would typically do that. Um, I guess I just had the smaller bit, although I don't call changing bits, but it is what it is. So trying to add just a little bit of width and make sure that they are the same across. I think it's looking really good though. I'm probably going to put another coat of lacquer on here before I move on. My next thing would be making a saddle for this. I've got a feeling that's going to be a fun activity finding a piece of antler that's going to be long enough for this whole thing. We always seem to be out of antler and have such a hard time finding anything for a large slot. I'm gonna have to go look. It may take me a little bit to find a piece that's actually gonna work for here. Because let's see, how long is this slot? 3.8. 3 3.8 inches. Almost 4 inches in slot that I have to fill with antler. So, but uh, I'll do it. I'll spend some time looking and I'll probably touch up the lacquer. Well, I've been working on making a saddle for this Martin here. Uh, I've been doing a couple other things on this. You can probably tell. I've been working on the finish, getting it cleaned up. I cleaned up the whole fretboard. I went ahead and leveled the frets, got them all polished up, cleaned up 
you know, I went ahead and oiled the fretboard with the new Be Good oil. It's looking really good. I've picked out a end pin, you can probably kind of see it here. And I've also picked out some bridge pins that I've gone ahead and done the bevel on the end. And the bridge pins match the end pin and they're both kind of that cream color that the tuners are. So hopefully everything kind of matches. Now, I really the next thing I need to do is get this saddle right. And to do that I need to put strings on it and figure out the height that I need. Right now it's sitting kind of high still. Of course, I'm not sure it's all the way down in there yet. Now when I was using the old saddle, or the uh, temporary saddle, we were sitting at a fairly reasonable height. We're still sitting high. I'm probably going to take this down a little bit more. But we are going to try to put some strings on this really soon. Because if you see the saddle here, you know, the slot goes all the way through and out under the beveled bits just a little bit. So for me to get the bevel right, I need the height right first. So I need to get it set up with strings, get the string height right, and get saddle height right. And then I can mark the bevels on the ends and carve those out to be correct. So string it up, figure out the height, you know, take it out, take it to the right height, test to make sure that's right. Take it out again and knock these bevels out. Kind of a back and forth process here, but we'll get it. So I'm going to take this bridge down just a little bit more, or the saddle that is. When we used that temporary one, it was sitting, you know, just a little high. And now the current saddle is sitting taller than that old temporary one, so I'll probably take this saddle down. I've been working on this guitar, and I've got the action set pretty good. It's, um maybe a hundred thousandths on the high E and almost eighty thousandths on the no, other way around. It's almost a hundred thousandths on the low E and about eighty on the high E. So it's looking really good. You can see right now it's up to tune. Um, but my saddle is still sticking way too far out the sides. So I need to trim this to the shape of the bridge and the way I'm going to do that I think is I'm just going to take my pencil and draw it on there. And then I'll just take it over probably to the uh, little spindle sander and knock that kind of curve out. Well, I smoothed off the ends of that saddle. I've gone ahead and I've oiled the bridge. Uh, you'll probably notice it doesn't exactly match the fretboard in color, but I mean a lot of that is age. Um, I could have dyed the bridge to maybe match the fretboard a little more, but I've chosen not to. So I could have dyed this to match it, but I figure it looks fine as it is and over time it'll darken up that rosewood there you know they're both the same they'll match eventually if you wait long enough so I've pretty much got this ready to go the only thing I think I have left to do is wax the top with the Renaissance wax I've checked the intonation it's looking really good I had to bring the low E saddle back for whatever reason. Um, what else did I do? I've gone ahead and I polished up everything other than the top. I wanted to do the top on camera. Uh, just so you all could see. Oh! I put the pit guard on. Um, this is the original pit guard. I really wanted to use the original pit guard so it didn't feel like we were taking anything away from this. You know? The reason it's got a new bridge is because when it came in, it didn't have a bridge. The reason it has new bridge pins is when it came in, it didn't have any bridge pins. But I didn't see much point in putting a new pit guard on when it came in with a pit guard. It's getting the original pit guard, and that's what it's going to be. I mean, obviously I could have made it look a little better with a new pit guard, but I like the idea of sending it back a little closer to original. So this uh, little applicator here, you kind of can't see it, but you can really see the uh, where I've got this on. This is kind of soaked in that Renaissance wax. Now I'll take a cleaner towel and buff it off. You can kind of tell when it's 
off because it gets really smooth. I think you can see on camera the difference between where I've waxed and where I haven't. It looks a lot better. So now I get to just go around the top. I don't want to put on too much at a time because then it becomes increasingly difficult to get it back off. I have been kind of rushing through these last couple of steps, not filming as much as usual. Uh, this guitar has been here for a long time at this point, and I'm really trying to get it out. A couple of things kind of delayed us. Uh, when we started to refinish this, we needed lacquer retarder, and we had to wait a couple of weeks for that, I think. So that slowed us down a little bit. And then this being my first full refinish slowed me down quite a bit. And lacquer just being lacquer slowed us down a lot. The dry time, the shrinkage, because with a new guitar you're filling all the pores, all the grains, you know, and then it shrinks and you gotta fill the grain again and it shrinks and it shrinks and it shrinks. But on this one, there were cracks and places where it had been damaged that I was trying to fill with the clear lacquer and it would just shrink and then you'd show up with cracks or I'd get it totally smooth and then a week later it would be like I barely put any on at all. Well, I think there we go. This thing's all polished up now. I think it's ready to go. Hardly looks like the same thing that came in. We cleaned it up quite a bit. If you remember when this came in, it wasn't playable, didn't have a bridge. All sorts of cracked. I th there was a big crack across the back here. We cleaned that up, cleaned it up quite a few cracks. I think it's looking really good for a 75 year old instrument. And if you take it at that, it looks really good. 75 years old. Sounds really good too. really pretty impressed with the sound of it. It's just a little bit of cleaning left to do before I stick it in the case. I notice there's a little bit of dust here and there, mostly from that antler. But I guess I'm going to play this a little bit more, let you hear how it really sounds, and before I put it away. That's a really good sounding old Martin. Pretty playable too. Yeah, even up higher on the neck, you can get some of those chords higher up. It very playable. The high E is the low E. When I say it's high, it's a hair high. We're talking five thousandths, thickness of a hair. It's just a little high. You know, when I say a little high, it's barely noticeable. You probably couldn't tell the difference. Only by numbers is it high. Now the high E is right where I want it to be. So really, this guitar is looking really good. Um, I'll bring it up a little closer so you can get one more good look at the whole thing. All cleaned up, that old pick guard, that fretboard we cleaned up, all new frets, feels real good. The new nut, that headstock, we didn't uh, scrape the finish off that headstock, but we did put new finish on it, 
And you can definitely read that Martin label a whole lot better now. If you remember, there was also that metal plate here they had screwed on. You can't even tell there was a screw on the on this part, the black part. There's two little circles there, but they're totally filled. Looks really good. Neck, we cleaned up. Anyways, I think it's good to go. I'm not sure if I showed you the tail pin, but there we go. Just a little bit of cleaning to do. Have Jerry look over it, and this thing should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, if you really enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. That'd really help. Once again, thanks for watching. My friends, Caleb has turned out another winner here. This old Martin guitar is back in good playable condition. I wouldn't call it perfect condition. There's some places where the finish just keeps bleeding through the little cracks, if you will. The cracks themselves are solid. There's no loose, you know, boards or anything like that. But, you know, it looks like a really well cared for old instrument now. You know, the finish has been hand rubbed out. It looks real nice. The frets are polished. The action's really low. It's got a great sound. I really like the guitar. It's just got a really nice mellow tone. That's the mahogany top on there. Really nice. Yeah, that's a nice guitar right there. Um, it, it's one of those old classics. It's just a great old box. I'm sure the customer's going to love it. Hope you've enjoyed watching Caleb fix this thing up. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're not yet subscribed, please do that and click the like button. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you.